Hello everyone and welcome to another video on learning C programming on the Raspberry Pi. In this video we're going to go over something called the struct. Uh, if you've programmed in other languages such as Python or C++ or Java, uh, you might be familiar with something called a class or an object, uh, but we don't have those in C. Uh, we, what we have is a struct, and, and what a struct is, is it, it's uh, think of it just as a container that holds variables of different types, and uh, we can refer to that container uh, with what's known as uh, dot notation uh, to access the different variables of that container. Um, and so in many ways it acts kind of like a, an object, but, but not quite. Um, so let's go ahead and get started with structs so I can show you what I mean. Here we are in a program that I wrote to demonstrate how structs work. And the first thing I'm doing, I'm including a couple libraries, the stdio library, so we can print to the screen, and we're going to use the string library so I can do a uh, string copy function. Uh, first thing we're going to do is create a struct uh, here. And we do that with the keyword struct with a small s, and then give it a label. And by convention, it's, uh, it's good to use a capital letter when you're give, uh, assigning these labels. And then in the curly brackets, just like a function, uh, we can then include the ver different variables that are part of that struct. And remember I said a struct is just kind of a container that holds different variables. And this struct called position is going to hold three variables. They're all unsigned integers, and they are going to be used to represent uh, XYZ coordinates in world space. Now, unlike a function, uh, one thing you need to do uh, when you create a struct is after the closing curly bracket you need to include that semicolon there if you don't do that it will not work okay so that's one way to create a, a struct um, and in the next one here we're going to create another struct uh, called player uh, and notice now that I'm using three different data types in this struct and that's one of the useful things about it is they don't have to all be the same data type uh, first thing I'm using a character array or a string uh, to called name and that's going we're going to use that to store the name of a character and notice that I can even include a struct within a struct so I'm using this position struct uh, within my player and that will represent the position of the player so that's kind of a cool thing about structs so if we uh, plan these out right we can really get some power there and then I have another struct that's an unsigned integer that's going to represent health. And notice I'm doing something different on the end of this one. I'm actually going to create a copy of this struct at, with the name Luke Skywalker. And you could actually create multiple, multiple names here of, say, players uh, separated by commas. And, uh, but you don't have to. So up here, we, don't, we didn't create any positions. We just uh, kind of defined what a position was. Uh, so down here in, in the main, uh, we are going to assign values to each one of these variables in, uh, in player for Luke Skywalker. So let me scroll down here a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, I'm using a string copy function from the string library and we're going to use dot notation to access name. So Luke Skywalker is the name of the player struct and uh, or I'm sorry, it's the label of the player struct, and we use this dot to access the name variable, and then we assign this string to it. So we are, in this line here, we are assigning Luke Skywalker to this name variable uh, under the label of Luke Skywalker. There we go. And then we use dot notation again, and we can go several layers deep. So we have the dot position, access position, but position is itself a struct, so we use another dot to access the x variable of the position struct. So it's Luke Skywalker dot position dot x uh, equals one. And do the same thing for the position dot y and the position dot z. Uh, finally, we use the dot health to assign a value to the health variable within that player struct. And down here, we can get them back out using the same kind of syntax with the dot notation and then print them to the screen like, and I've used this printf function before. You've seen it many times before. So let's go ahead and build and run this so I can show you uh, that it worked. And there you go. Uh, you can see that we have uh, loaded these things into uh, 
these variables successfully and they've come back out successfully just just like we loaded them okay now let me show you a different way to do this um, down here I have some stuff I've commented out and I'm going to uncomment it so we can use it uh, here we're going to create another player and you, we can create it in our program by just using the keyword again struct uh, using the label player and then give it give it a name so this one's going to call be called Harry Potter notice we're using a small letter because it's a it's a variable here um, and then again we're using a string copy and using a dot notation to load a, a name string and in this in this case we are actually going to define the position separately so we are going to create a position uh, called Hogwarts and then we were going to assign the XYZ uh, variables of, of Hogwarts uh, using dot notation directly and we might want to do this because we might have more than one player that's going to use the same position for example uh, so we can go ahead and do it that way and then we can use Harry Potter dot position and make it equal to Hogwarts which does the same thing that we did with Luke Skywalker um, so that's, a, that's another way that you can get uh, your values into your structs and and then we're going to print information out on the screen the same way we did for Luke Skywalker here and then just to demonstrate that we still have the information for Luke Skywalker I'm going to print that again okay and that's all this is going to do let's go ahead and build it and run and you can see it did just what we expected uh, even though we we did this completely different it still accomplished the same thing and we still have the value so in many ways using structs like this is very similar to uh, what we might do in Java or C++ or Python when we use classes and objects uh, it's not quite the same way but it's uh, pretty close so I hope you liked this video. Please subscribe, leave comments, and please uh, share with your friends. And we will talk again real soon.